Hey guys, what's up? Adriatsko here, bringing you another hit film tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at how we can generate cool 2D shapes right inside of hit film. I've tested this technique in both the ultimate and express version of hit film, and I got the same result. And of course, if you're having any troubles, feel free to send me a message or comment below. And if you'd like to purchase more advanced presets, you can get a hold of these by visiting my website at selfie.com slash underscore designs. Most of these products go for a dollar or two and are full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. And anyways, you're probably wondering why would you want to create these images inside of HitFilm? And the reason is because you can create really cool animations with them which we will hopefully be getting into in later tutorials. So here I am inside of HitFilm, and if you take a look at the viewer, you'll see that I just have this cool little abstract shape scene going on. And it was just a little something that I threw together in about five minutes. And it's just to emphasize the kind of shapes that you can create inside of HitFilm. If you look at the top left panel of the screen, these are some examples that I threw together in about 5 minutes, and I will be showing you how you can make those. So I'm just going to create a new project, and you're going to want to be working in 1920 by 1080 because we're going to be saving these images. Um, and we're going to want them to be the highest quality possible. And of course you can go higher than 1920 by 1080 but I generally work in 1280 by 720 so I want to go with something a little higher. And the frame rate doesn't matter because like I mentioned before we're saving the images not the video. So let's start editing. And we're going to start off by creating a new composite shot. I'm going to call this one circle and square. And I have a duration of 5 seconds. And if you'd like to change the default duration, simply go to File, Options, and here you can change your composite shot default duration as well as many other properties. So let's create a new layer and it's going to be a plane and I'm going to create it to be white and I will call it white. And now let's also create another layer. This one will be a camera. So let's select the white plane, make sure that the camera isn't selected and then take your ellipse mask tool and zoom in. Now you'll want to click right in the middle and then hit Alt Shift and then drag up. And by hitting Alt and Shift you make it so that the mask is created from that point so that it's completely centered. So let's go to our selection tool, grab a corner, Hold shift and drag out and scale our square up, sorry, our circle. <laughs> so let's rename this as circle. And then let's duplicate this by hitting control or command D. And I'm going to call this one square. And on the one that I called square, I'm going to go to the mask and delete it and I'm going to create a new mask. So once again make sure that you have the square plane selected because if you have the camera selected you can't make a mask out of the camera so yeah pretty self-explanatory. Zoom into the middle once again click in the middle with your left mouse hit alt shift and drag up select the mask go to your selection tool once again by clicking V, grab your corner, and then hold shift and drag up. 
and there you have it so I'm just gonna go to file and then click export frame and I'm gonna call this one square and I'm gonna call this one circle So I'm just going to go and create two new folders in the project media. And this is just so I can keep my stuff organized. And I'm going to import these two shapes. So let's drag the circle onto the timeline. And you'll notice that since it's a PNG, you get really high quality but also if I were to import some kind of background onto here it has a transparent background which is really convenient so I'm just going to zoom in and go to my video transitions and drag the iris effect onto the circle now I'm just going to scrub through the timeline and you'll see instantly we have an octagon. So why not save this as an octagon? And of course you could continue this process by simply going to your shape panel and selecting a different shape. And once again you'll have to adjust where you are in the timeline to change the scale. Now what I'm going to do is play around with some of these settings. So the curvature, if you increase it, you can get a kind of flower effect. And of course, if you increase the number of sides on your polygon, you'll get more edges. So I'll just save this one as flower. And if you decrease the curvature, you can kind of get this sun effect. So I'm going to save this one as sun. And if you change the pinch effect, you can either get this other kind of flower effect or I'm not quite sure what you would call this, but like a really spiky circle. So I'll save this as flower 2. And if you change the shift, you can get a kind of blade effect. and so forth you pretty much just adjust these and you can get really cool things just try to be creative and make whatever so the other thing that you can change is the direction so currently it's set to out but if you set it to in and go to later in the iris effect you can kind of get this reverse iris and you could get something like this and of course if you were to fool around with the rotation you can make animations like this and of course if you change your pinch and stuff you can get something like this which looks really cool if you change the shift and the pinch, you can make cool things like this, which almost looks like a little shutter, perhaps. So I'll just save this one as spiked outline or something. And yeah, I mean, 
create whatever you'd like. And I'm just going to erase this from the, the editor and import all of these shapes. And for example, I'm going to take um, this flower that I made and make it a composite shot. And we're going to mask out the inside of it. So select it, create a new camera once again, select your flower, zoom in, take your ellipse mask tool, click in the middle, hit alt shift, drag up, and rescale it. Now what you're going to want to do is click on this red circle here by your blending mode of your mask and what this will do is invert the mask so now i'll just scale it up holding shift to keep the aspect ratio and i have this sunflower kind of effect now and of course if i were to drag on for example this sun i could copy the mask by hitting Control or Command V, con oh, sorry, Control C or Command C, and then paste it on the other shape by hitting Control or Command V, and there you have it. I will just call this one Inset Sun. I'm just going to import it quickly. And the next kind of shape we're going to make is similar to this shape, except with uniform dashes. So let's create a new composite shot, and we're going to call it dashed circle. And let's take our text tool by hitting T and dragging it to be the length of, sorry, the width of our scene. Yeah, sorry. Um, and we're going to call this one, sorry, we don't need to name it. We need to click the dash key and then a space and then dash key and then a space and so forth. And the font that I usually use is called Arial Black. Now just increase the scale of this, copy it, paste it, and the key here is that you only want one line. Now we're going to go under our effects, go under our warps, and then place the polar warp onto the text. And now we have this cool circle effect. Generally what I do with these in my animations is keyframe the scale and keyframe the rotation. So if you change the range, it'll you can just do this to adjust um, the distance between your dashes just to make sure that they're uniform. Or you can stretch them out or decrease their length. So then you can go to your start radius, sorry, your end radius, and this will be your scale transform. And you can play around with these effects, but this is generally what I do, and I like it how it is. So let's go to options, export frame. And we're gonna create another one of these. So I'm just gonna uncheck the polar warp for now. I'm going to scale it down, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it again, whoops. So now let's check the polar warp, and here we have it. 
So I'll export this one as dashed circle two. And yeah, um, the reason why you don't want to have more than one line is because if you do, you'll have more than one circle. So if I were to toggle the polar warp now, you'll see I have two lines. And personally, I don't like that, but maybe you're into that. So yeah, that's about it, guys. I'm just going to go right into the editor to show you guys what we've made. And this is pretty cool. It didn't take long at all. And we got some really nice effects. And since we worked in 1920 by 1080, we got really good quality. And of course, if you wanted to change the color of your shapes, all you would have to do is go under your effects, take the fade to color, sorry, not fade to color. Um, you just want to go, going to want to go under your gradients and fills put a fill color effect onto it and change it to a different color. So for example, gray and increase your blend amount to 100% and there you have it. So that's about it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something and Hopefully you might get into motion graphics. Yeah, um, so if you have any feedback for me on how I could improve my tutorials or any tutorial suggestions, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Anyways, um, have a nice day. Bye.